Well, folks, you know you're in for a treat when you hear that tune. So it's time for another week of the Rec Poker Podcast. This is the forums edition of the podcast. Uh, I've got the best freaking job in the world. My name is Jim Reed. I'm Bluff Serini in the home game. And I get to hang out here on Monday nights talking with my friends about poker. Um, if you want to find out more about me or the rest of the wrecking crew, because that's what it takes around here. It takes a group, a gang, a crew to make all the magic happen. You can go to rec.poker slash crew, but you can just listen up as well, because you're going to meet a few of them right here tonight on the show. Well, I'm Chris Jones. You can find me 5B5 on threads or Twitter or 5 by 5 in the Poker Star home game. And I'm Rob Washam. You can find me as Rabman50 just about everywhere. <laughs> and if you're having a good time and you enjoy the podcast, um, you can thank the Running Aces Hotel Racetrack and Casino because they're our sponsor and have been for many years. We couldn't do what we do without them. And we're very grateful for your support, for their support. And um, if you want to say thanks to them and say thanks to us, you can go to rec.poker slash support and find all sorts of great ways to help us out with a review or a like or a follow or a subscribe or maybe even buying one of us a cup of coffee. Uh, so please do head on over rec.poker slash support and see what is what are your options are over there. So I mentioned already, this is the forums edition of the podcast where we take a forum post from the absolutely free forums at rec.poker and uh, talk about it here on the air. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about a few hands uh, that Chris Jones himself played recently and chris i won't put words in your mouth why don't you kind of introduce the theme for tonight and we'll get right into it uh well uh so i played um not that much poker uh on sunday uh just yesterday and but i ran into this spot over and over again and it was kind of confounding Mm. um which is basically we have opened uh been called by an out of position player very typical bread and butter spot um and we have opened with a big pair in all three cases of the hands we're going to be talking about um we go to a flop and we're we got we, we remain uh undeterred with our over pair so we continue uh our uh, our action and then we face a check raise from our mm-hmm. opponent and that's where I wanted to start talking about, you know, what is our approach in this kind of situation and and where are we at? And in fact, as I'm looking at these two, just to set the groundwork, we're in tournaments in all of these cases. Um, this is prior to the money because I did mm-hmm. not cash <laughs> My in any of the yeah. tournaments I played in. So um, I know that none of them made the money. Um, And we're not even facing a lot of bubble pressure uh, here. This is sort of in that sort of that phase two of the tournament where it's kind of getting down to it. We're getting close to where Reg is closing, uh, but we're not uh, near to where the bubble is going to burst. And in all of these cases, I have between 27 and 36 big blinds. So in one case, I've got 27. One case, I've got 30. One case, I got 36. And I have aces, queens, and jacks. And in all the cases, the board came under those cards uh, and I got check raised. And now I want to talk about, okay, what's next? So you're the original raiser. You've been called and you are c-betting on these boards, which seems like an uncontroversial Yeah, and we can talk about, I think we'll talk about the board specifically uh, because they each have a different dynamic, which I think will be interesting. But let's more maybe start in general before we get to the specific boards that these were. Well, I think one of the things is what was your position when you opened? Mm-hmm. Because the person that's going to be calling you is going to put a different range on you yep. based on your position, right? Yeah, and that does vary a little bit more. So uh, when I had jacks, I was under the gun. Queens, I was on the button. And aces, I was in the cutoff. Mm. So, yeah, so... In the cutoff and the button, especially, you can be really, really wide there if you're the initial opener, right? Yep. I mean, that's it, uh, the button is almost a 50% range, you know, that you're opening. Well, depending on, you know, the types of players in the small blind and the big blind, but that's a the, your standard steal spot where you're going to try to steal with a lot. So the guy in the big blind calling you could just assume that you don't have much mm-hmm. or you could have just about anything. 
Mm -hmm. So in, in this spot, uh, one of the things that's going to be in common for all the hands is uh, we've made the C-bet and we're facing a check raise. And just myself, anecdotally, when I'm in this spot, I, I feel a lot of tension because I feel like I have a very strong hand. You know, over pairs to the board are hard to get. They're hard to make. They're typically very strong holdings. And our opponent, when they check raise, you know, depending on who they are, they either have a very, very strong holding, a very weak holding, or a balanced range with some semi bluffs in there and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm, for some villains, I know this is a, a BS answer. Like for some villains, I think you can fold pocket jacks on a 10 high board if they check raise because they're just only ever doing it with a set or two pair. Um, I think like Rob's getting at for some of these other players, especially if you have a wide opening range, they can check raise you with more air or semi bluff garbage hands that you don't want to fold to. My, my tension that I feel in this spot is because I like general rules. I'm not that intelligent. So I like to really just follow flow charts and algorithms when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, if I three bet when I get check raised, then I'm kind of allowing my opponent to play perfectly against me because they're they're going to continue with the hands that have an overpair beat and they're going to give up with the hands that uh, that I'm beating. And I just have that adage in my mind from thinking, you know, the Thinking Poker podcast back in the day, but how you just don't want to do that. You don't want to put your opponent in a position where they can play perfectly against you. But I think what I'm going to learn today is that that's just one of the general rules that you kind of have to weigh. Well, um, talk, talk to me about that. One. Yeah, I mean, one of the interesting things for me is, um, I mean, this is certainly a move that puts you back on your heels. It's it, it to go to talk about kind of Andrew Brokus and that sort of idea of a polarized for and a condensed range. And we start this, you know, pre-flop, we think of ourselves as having a polarized range or at least a value range. Um, and we're hoping to get chips in the pot. And when we get check raised, it is uh, it immediately condenses our 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 holding into something that is not no longer extreme value. It still has some value. Like you mentioned, there's still a lot of um, bluffs and draws in these kinds of scenarios that we are well ahead of. And there's even some like some people, a lot of people actually will check raise top pair on these mm -hmm. sort of low boards. Um, and so we're doing very well against those. So theory, when you look these spots up, um, like on a GTO wizard or whatever, uh, in most cases, it is asking you to raise this back um, against your opponent. And <laughs> that's where that okay so i and and I, you know it's really good to listen to theory it's really good to think about how much are our opponents playing like the theoretical villain here that would allow us to do that and how many how and if you look at the bluffing range of a gto player in this spot like so let's let's talk about one of these boards um, and, and sorry or, sorry Chris, but uh just to, to nail down the variables one more level are if we are three betting at this stack depth is it going to be a shove um well okay. i i, th I we, yeah i mean we can get to it i wasn't sure if there probably was like a, but there right. are actually i've seen models where you're not where you're like almost okay. clicking clicking it back um so so all the options are on the table. We're deep right. enough that it's not uh, that simplified yet. Okay, right. please continue. Because, by the way, when we continue here, we're often continuing very small um, mm -hmm. in this in this spot. So, um, I don't know. Other thoughts? Do you, or do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about these three specifically, or one of them I, specifically? I mean, or? I guess I guess the the last thing, uh, the general, like I, I let's talk uh, generally. The options are going to be fold call or raise and then if you raise to how much um and then like there's going to be good arguments for all of them I, I it can we generally eliminate any of them like is calling ever going to be the right decision at this chip stack can, can you call and just yes. like play the run out 
according to how it how it runs out yeah. and decide and like play yes. poker on yep. future streets okay. yeah we have position i mean i think there's a there's a there's a s- strong case for potentially doing that no that's terrible because that really just makes our decision no, all that's... harder that there's <laughs> yeah, no that is definitely one of the options <laughs> right. so we haven't eliminated any no. of the options out the bat. no you, all can, right, then you he... can fold depending yeah. on the player you know it like we, we always say it depends right yeah okay well then yeah let's talk about some specific spots okay i already I think, feel i already feel uncomfortable Chris. So there, this is interesting because i think we've got uh three very like kind of they're all we all have an overpair on them but they're all different boards mm-hmm. okay so i'm going to start with i think the easiest or sort of most sort of like uh which is kind of a, a rainbow board um so we have aces in the cutoff We've opened, been called by the big blind. We have we start the hand with 36 big blinds. So we've got 34 behind now or 34 and a bit behind. Um, the board comes six of hearts, deuce of diamonds, eight of spades. Um, and uh, checks to us. Uh, we have the ace of spades and the ace of hearts, if that matters to you. Um, we bet small and uh see so we bet about uh, another two big blinds uh and we see them check raise to six mm. and now we have 30 32 behind with a pot of um well there's currently a pot of around eight mm. and uh plus they 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 you know i guess it's a pot of 14 really when you count their six um so what did the solver say about the uh bet size on the flop it likes a really small bet from us uh with our aces uh okay. and this is this is definitely one where uh if I, you know if, uh, i'll look this up again but if uh, if i remember correctly it's advocating for the three bet here um okay I, the reason i ask is because it seems it's like it's kind of a dynamic board because um, you could you could worry about a bigger card showing up if you had a, a hand like Ace Eight, right? Mm-hmm. So it makes it very dynamic. Um, usually, in a dynamic situation like that, the preflop aggressor would bet a bigger, mm-hmm. like sixty-six to a hundred percent of the pot. Mm-hmm. Is it because specifically aces in this case? Because we specifically have aces that we're betting small. Let me or is there I, any big bets at all in that? Let me let me just uh pull it up, keep talking while you're talking, and I'll yeah, just I'll pull it up while you're loading that up there. Um, because I would have said that aces might on a on a board like this, aces might be one of the hands that you would bet call because you're not worried about overcards coming as much. And was it was it two tone or rainbow, Chris? I'm sorry. Rainbow. Rainbow. It was so, rainbow. So so it, eight six it's, four rainbow. It's eight, dynamic. Six, deuce. It's dynamic oh, eight, six, for the deuce, rainbow, yeah. it's dynamic for the like top pair hands, but it's not that dynamic from like a straight or a flush point of view. Yeah, there's the two, you know, there's the, the gapper out there. Um but that and, would make me <laughs> feel like I'd be more inclined to shove a hand like Jack's and call a hand like aces because we just don't care if a queen or a king or something comes. Right. Uh but Rob, you're like actually the- you're you're correct in that we have some some big bets in this spot according okay. to the, um, I, I, th- I thought so we would. uh aces is one of those there it's betting every size uh so that's not very oh, helpful. okay okay so <laughs> it's got it's got like a All pot right. size bet a half si- pot size bet a quarter you know a 33 percent bet and like a almost like a 10 percent bet wow, and it's doing sizes. it's doing it's doing all all four of those about equally, equally? across its range okay so make up your mind, right? I don't know. I yeah, have no idea. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> well, I'm thinking if you do bet bigger there, it's going to, um, you know, it's not going to allow them to do a lot of three betting without them going all in mm-hmm. or forcing you all in. Right. And actually, as I look at this, uh, I'm wrong. So this is uh, this is not what I was, I was misremembering or it's a different hand I was looking at. So when mm-hmm. we get check raised here, um it is advocating for us to flat with aces yes all right yep i would i would definitely flat with aces there we got here's the thing there's no straights 
-hmm. All there is is backdoor flush draws and a possible straight draw. Yep. Um, the only thing you're really worried about here is sets of eights, sixes, or deuces, right? Because right. they're going to mm -hmm. call with any pair. Yeah. So or eight six, I um, guess. Yeah. Or eight six, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, but there's a hell of a lot more hands in his range that do not connect with this. Mm -hmm. And he's he's changed. He's putting his he's changing his range to be a more polarized range by making that check raise, right? Mm -hmm. And then we we we're coming back with a more linear range. Um, the fact that we can check with aces means we have not capped our range, right? So we could check with pocket eights too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then uh, let me ask you the next question here. When we when we do the the flat here, which is actually what I did in this hand, as I flatted, um, and then. Um, so there now we go to a flop with around 16 in the middle. We've got around 30 behind. Uh, so it's about a two to one stack to pot ratio. The turn is the Jack of diamonds and Excellent. our opponent bets uh, 10 big blinds. Into well, we're not the folding. Middle. We're not folding. Mm -hmm. So we could shove here or we could call and no, try and collect it all on the river it's totally rainbow yet right uh the now there's two diamonds right oh okay there's two diamonds so there so is a, a backdoor flush and still no straights right mm -hmm. still no straights available and you only have spr of two so to me it seems like a shove just get it in just yeah. get it in here yeah I mean, and, with an SPR two, when you have an overpair like that, and there's no, the board is not that connected. I don't know how you can, how you can, get away from it. Yeah. Cool. No, I don't think All we right. can. I don't think that's, we can get away. That's from what it. I did. Um, uh, I ran into a set, but that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> now I think. And even that's going to be the case for almost every turn that comes, right? Like, I guess you wouldn't want to do it necessarily if the eight pairs, because that's the most likely value yeah. hand that our yeah. opponent has when they're checking. And then there. also the ones that are a little dicey are like um, the ones that complete the obvious like the seven. open enders straight. So like, yeah, uh, right. so if they've got nine, seven, like the five and the 10 are not great. Like eight is yeah. the worst card. Five and 10 are like the next two worst cards yeah and then um, even like the seven is uh the seven or the, the nine seven, are like the they're, seven, they're, they're two yeah. pair yeah they're two pairing there a, lit, a yeah, little yeah you're not blocking any of that stuff with your aces right so right. yeah any seven any nine any five seven nine or ten right or eight but really could jack, complete the jack a straight, is a really right? good card it's really. a really good card yeah exactly exactly yeah. that's why so, i say yeah at that point you, so i like I that know, you have well. a choice yeah yeah all right, let's complicate things. Uh, okay. So we'll go to the next hand. So now we've got queens. We're on the button. We get called by the big blind. Um, we start this hand with, what did we start this hand with? Uh, 27 big blinds. Uh, button calls. Flop is jack of hearts, nine of diamonds, four of diamonds. And we have no. two queens with no diamond. We're on the button and the big We're blind on the button, called us. There, they're in the big blind and they call yes. us. Okay. Uh, the suits check. are two suits are what are the suits? We two have diamonds? the queen of spades and the queen of clubs. So two black queens. Uh Jack of Hearts, nine of diamonds, four of diamonds is the flop. Okay. okay. Um they check. We bet small. I think that's what we did. Yep, we bet small. Uh and we get check raised. So my inclination now again, what do you, without... with the with the flush draw in play or the two-tone board in play, what's yeah, how does this change things or does it? So I would probably see bet to a slightly higher sizing when it's two-tone versus when it's rainbow, but that's a pretty trivial difference. I'm much more likely to shove the flop on this one than I was on the previous one, both because we have uh we don't want to see aces or kings on the we've got some protection to to bet and I think our opponents 
more likely to have draws because there is a flush draw available and we want to be capturing value against that portion of their range. And I still think some players are going to make that play with a one pair hand here because we've opened from so late position that our range is very wide to open with, which means our C betting range should also be very wide. So we're actually pretty close to the top of our range when we get check rates. So that for, for a few reasons, this is already a very different scenario in my mind. I'd be much more inclined to three bet shut you or, or, or to three bet to, to whatever sizing is appropriate, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was a show. Now this is a little more static board. There's not as many cards that are going to change who's got the advantage right now. So um, I think there's a lot of ace jacks in his range, right? Mm -hmm. um, obviously you don't, like Jim said, you don't want to see a ace or a king. Right. So, uh, but most of those, any, any card less than a jack is probably not going to bother you too much. Right. Other than another dime. Right. Yep. Right. right. Uh, well, I'm I'm happy I'm happy that you're agreeing with me because that's what I did. I shoved mm -hmm. here too. Um, also lost this one when they called <laughs> and and uh, had the third. They got a third diamond on the turn. Okay. Um, but you know I'm I'm happy. That's I think a great result. I will take yeah. them having a, yep. a flush draw any day of the week. Um, I'm fist pumping that when I see it turned over in that spot. Yeah. And I think the dynamic here is when you see those uh those diamonds there it it become that check raise becomes weighted toward uh some a lot of diamonds in as possibilities in their range and especially since we're not holding any it makes our queens even that much stronger and especially from the big blind where they're calling with just a ton of suited combos that they wouldn't right. necessarily be from other positions they can have almost every combination of diamonds there which is yeah. is a yeah. ton that's just that's yeah. so many more combinations than their straight draw combinations you know like that just makes up a huge part of their value so or, it is what you want to see or their oh, yeah. pairs yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cuz yeah. you know they're not going to have sets as often as they are going to have that flush draw yeah all right let's do the most complicated one this is the one that i think i might have misplayed <laughs> we have jacks under the gun. We start the hand with 29 big blinds. We open to two, get folds around to the big blind. They call us. Flop is nine, five, five rainbow. Ooh. And we have two jacks and mm. they check to us. We bet a uh, tiny. Um, they raise tiny. They check raise to around are we so we op we go to two and they check raise to around five. Oh, two and, um, and it's on us. We've got jacks. So it's nine five five rainbow or rainbow. Two rainbow? Nine five five so, rainbow. So other than like six, seven, seven, eight, eight, six, there are no draws here. Correct. And this is a board that they should be check raising at a high frequency if they're paying attention because they have a ton of the fives. And from under the gun, you have like no fives. Correct. Um, so you might have ace five suited. That's about yeah, it. yeah, might, yeah, might. Um, you should have for your board coverage, but yeah. Right. And I might, so that, I might have, I might have five five. Oh, yeah, you might. You would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it was Taylor playing this. Yeah, you know there's not a five to be seen. There's no fives in, in that range. <laughs> so th I'd be more inclined to call in this situation, but I, I don't like it. I mean, there's a lot of over cards that we don't want to see. And our opponent, I I'm kind of hoping that we can call here. And then our opponent's going to play more straightforwardly on turns and rivers. And they're not just going to keep bluffing if this is a bluff. Because I think mm -hmm. when they check raise and we call, the, the trouble's going to come on future streets because yeah. we have to just, and, and, I, and I think you should call here and it's perfectly okay to choose to fold on a future street. It's not one of those spots where it's like, well, I decided he was bluffing on the flop, so I just have to call down. That's not true. Shake that out of your mind. Um, 
So this is the most complicated of the three hands that you put to us tonight, Chris. And I feel like my wanting to call is maybe because it just feels like a simpler decision. I'm not sure it's the right decision, but I what I, what I want to do is call and play poker on future streets. Yeah. And this is the, do we the have, that... I'm sorry. Do we have a read on this guy? Mm -hmm. I don't really, uh, I only okay. have, let me just, I don't have. Many. So we're, we're playing the population. What, how's the population? Yeah, I've only got 27 total lifetime hands on this player. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I and, think I think I call. Yeah, which is what I did. Um, but this is this is the the chart I was thinking about when I looked it up, and it mm. really it really likes a raise here. Uh, it likes us raising the most with tens, uh, jacks next, then queens, and and like you call with with kings and aces, but you you raise with your tens and your jacks and your queens here, um, pretty heavily. Um, and that, pro that probably because we you're like we said we don't have that many fives mm -hmm. so we don't have we don't have you know that many that we can actually raise with but we can get uh those gutters to fold here um we can get some of their 9x that's maybe raising here to maybe call or fold either one seems fine to me mm -hmm. um but I ended up calling here, which is okay. You can do that sometimes. Um, it's, um, but then, okay. So, okay. We've, we've, we've done that. And this one, I want to take us to the turn. So now um, an ace of clubs comes on the turn. So now there's two clubs. The board is five of spades, nine of hearts, five of clubs, ace of clubs. Um, and there's 15 in the middle we've got 22 behind our opponent covers us and they bet five big blinds see this that card is good for our range as the really end of the good. time opener so when they lead into that that seems even stronger than it might under other circumstances hard agree but they bet so so small. small. <laughs> yeah. So now are are they ever bluffing at that size, or is it all, always value? And if it's always value, are we are there not value betting a nine there, right? Are they? I don't are think they? so. <laughs> I think this is a five. Or the question I had when I was like do those do those gutters that we that uh because those seem to be the most obvious bluffs here are like six seven seven eight yeah. and eight six do they then bet if if this player's like i don't i this is this was a this was a pretty big tournament or a pretty high buy-in tournament so they they could be quite good do they do this with their fives as well? Like their five X, do they bet really mm -hmm. small here and just do this now with their gutters? Um, I don't know. Did they, did they do it? So the one thing that we didn't consider was if they had like a wheel ace three flop and they've got the backdoor wheel draw. Yeah, that's possible. And now they've if, hit an ace and they've now they've hit an ace, although they might, they might slow down now that they've made top pair bad kicker because right. you're going to have better aces than they are all the time mm -hmm. when you open and you have an ace, you're going to have an, a better ace than you. So maybe that yeah, actually, they wouldn't take that long. One of the problems with when you, when we call here, when we call here, we're capping our range, right? Mm -hmm. Cause now we're saying, well, we don't have aces or Kings. Um, now you could still have ace king, mm -hmm. you know, ace queen, maybe ace king, ace queen type hand, but that's about it yeah. for, for having a strong hand. I don't so know. There really, like, the, like there are no good turns for us. This is part of the problem, right? Like there's yeah, literally other than a Jack, a Jack would other, be a, yes, deli a, a delightful jack, turn or like a two, three <laughs> or four, I guess would be if, if we don't put them on the wheel then right. yeah yeah no there's there are very few good turns for us um 
this felt like actually one of the better turns that we could possibly ask for. Like, mm -hmm. and for them to be betting, that's why I was like, I have to, I have to call this. I, I so, and I think this is maybe a mistake. I think I probably should have folded here. Just I because think it I was had, so small, you were thinking I had, like, I have yeah, to defend it's like this. So the, small, like how can I fold yeah. this right now here? Um, but I feel like I really, really needed to probably even fold this here after we get check raised. Um, this just feels really milky. Um, I don't know. Is there, so the more sophisticated, the more experienced the player, the more likely I feel like they are to have bluffs and to, to do this in a balanced fashion. Is there anything about the situation that makes us feel like they wouldn't check raise a five on the flop? Like, is there, because if they, if, if, if they're slowing their fives, which you could do on a board like this, there's also no bad turns for you when you've got five X here, then, then this turn bet is a lot more weighted towards those six, seven, six, eight, eight, seven hands. And they can size yeah, down because they don't care if you have an ace or not, because they're basically like tr just attacking your own air at this point. Sorry, Rob, what was you? I was just going to say, I he's not, if he has a five and he all of a sudden sees that ace show up mm -hmm. against an under the gun open, he's going to he's going to want to get some money in the pot right now. If he's got a five, mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. he's he's thinking, okay, Chris, you know, opened with ace king, ace queen, something like that, ace jack maybe, and uh, that ace is going to help him, and it's going to allow him to put more money in the pot. I got a five here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make mm -hmm. him pay more. So the fact that he went small to me means he's not polarizing. So I think he's got a nine. Hmm. Mm. I just think he's got a nine here. I don't think he has a five because he'd be betting bigger. I don't think he has a, a bluff because he'd be betting bigger. He'd be betting a polarized range with either his fives or his bluffs or his set of nines, his full house, basically. Hmm. So I just, it just seems that the bet is so small that he's got to be, I'm, I think he's betting a nine. See, I, I agree that the bluffs would be bigger here, like the the gut shots and that kind of thing. But given the stack sizes going into this, Chris, if you call this bet for five, there's going to be like a pot size bet left, or will there be more than a pot size bet left? I already I already lost them. Um, there'll be. Uh, well, I did call, so I can tell you exactly how many. <laughs> be Twenty five in the middle, and I yeah. have eight, eighteen behind now. So I think I think they can bet small on the turn with their fives because they know it's a trivial call on the river to the, to, to, for, for the part of your range that's going to call on the river. It doesn't matter if it's 18 or 12. Like I think it's still, you're calling with your aces. Um, so I, I think he could have a fun. The, the, the size of the turn inclines me more to, to a five. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause it's a, it's a, here's some rope. And again, I would I would say that if the turn wasn't an ace, right, 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 yeah, if yeah, the turn yeah, was yeah, yeah. like a tan or a, you know right. some other meaningless card, that's a good. Then point, I Bob. would then I would definitely put him on a on a five. But the fact that it was an ace, I at least from my mind, I would be thinking, okay, I've got trip fives. This guy right. now has a pair of aces with a good kicker. So he's he's going to put money in the pot, right? Let's right. go, let's yeah. go. It does it does feel like that kind of dynamic where the board's good for you, for, good for me. Why are you putting money? In? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get that. Um, and I, the river is sort of because then the river is just a death card for me. It's an eight, which is oh. like com completes those gutters that if they are bluffing, completes a lot of them at least. Yeah. Um, and, and he shoves. He's and he shoves. Be, he shoves. He's going to be shoving no matter. I mean, like he. I, I'm like once I call this, I'm like okay. But I think I was sort of like. Uh, I guess I'm. 
guess I'm going with this, but unless it's a six, seven, or eight, then I'm probably right. not. And it came an eight, and I did end up folding. But I th- think this is a turn, even how small it is. I don't know. I just don't. I did this turn. When people make these small milky bets, I'm like, well, I can't really fold because mm-hmm. I still beat some of their value. But mm-hmm. I also feel like when we do this, we just like we just dwindle down our chip stack. Now I've got 17 big blinds. I started the hand with 30. Uh, you know, I don't I, I just I, I don't know. We're also inviting them to shove with their bluffs on the river. Like Rob right. said earlier, they're cap. We're capping our range when we call. Right. And so a thinking player should take it away <laughs> yeah on the river there um and they're going to do it on like every river like Pretty again there's no good like like you're really in the in the blender here, yeah no matter what happens so and i guess this is why the bots prefer a, sh- a three bet here a on three the flop, bet yeah because yeah. it's just even in position this is a terrible spot to play on future streets yeah so we were talking about, and I, I hate this. I hate this feeling. We were talking about this earlier. And Chris, you were talking about how, like, if we, if we re-raise or something with a hand like this, then maybe they'll fold some of their draws. Maybe they'll call with their top pair hands, that kind of thing. I always feel like I'm in, I put myself in jail because I can't decide if I want them to continue with second best hands or not. And like, if I'm making an action that they're only ever going to continue with hands that have me crushed, I struggle with this a lot because on one hand, like I said earlier, you're allowing them to play perfectly, which is bad. But on the other hand, you're locking up the pot a lot of the time when they fold and like winning a, a, a pot now that's half the size it could be later is also really, really valuable. Yeah, so is that, sure. is that just a function of our own chip stack and like, we should be more inclined to do that when we're in these spots where we're going to get bluffed off the river in these like 30 to 40, I don't yeah. know, 30 to 35 big blind stacks. It does seem like it. And it does seem like, um, you know, as I was looking at these spots, the more, uh, the more these boards sort of get to both the pair, the paired and the flush draw boards were ones where it liked bigger bets and it liked us three betting as the in position player versus Hmm. that one that first that eight six deuce rainbow board when we had aces uh it liked the flat and it actually liked the flat as i looked at it other big pairs it wasn't just aces it was like really kind of you know i think like we were maybe raising with like nines Mm -hmm. and tens or something but then like jacks queens kings and aces were all just flatting that 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 check raise there and so worried about a a card coming out bigger than yours right that's going to change the Mm -hmm. yep 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 Mm. so and maybe that's how we we the we want to look at how how dynamic is the board and how much do do the future sort of turn cards threaten our big pair so like if we have aces nothing threatens it if we have kings very little threatens you know on down right and so like the more the more we're threatened then the more we want to turn our uh uh, um and three bet against those check raises right you're you're the old saying you're betting for protection right Mm -hmm. um so when when there's a possibility that there's cards that could come higher than yours you're more apt to want to bet bigger yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to deny that smaller, that right? And you bet smaller or play more passively when you have aces and kings than you do with checks or tens. Mm-hmm. Yep, that that's a good general rule, and I think that makes sense. And I think the other thing that that we can take from this is that you can play more aggressively on the more dynamic boards, the two tone boards, the flush and straight boards. Um, with all of your holdings, but even more so with those vulnerable overpairs like the tens and jacks mm-hmm. uh, on boards like that. I, I'm still more inclined to play the paired boards more conservatively because there's, especially boards like that where they're they're paired and it's hard to make a straight and there's no flush draw. 
it eliminates a lot of the portion of the range that isn't a very strong hand that can check raise like that. There's just well, the, fewer semi bluffs available. So the interesting thing you asked earlier, um, when we raise, do we shove? Yes. Uh, and on some of the boards that we were talking about earlier, the clear answer was yes. On that Queens board, when when uh, it was a two tone board, there were two diamonds yeah. on the board. It was Jack. What was it? Jack, Jack nine. nine. Four. Yeah. Um, that was a clear, like, just get it in. Makes um, perfect sense. But this one, it wants us to raise with jacks, but this is the one where it does not want us to go all in. It wants us to min click. Hmm. So I think we are raise folding this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because they have so many fives in their range. Uh, in fact, I should I should just check. I should just check. If we I was going to say, what, what are they check raising you with when you look at your salt? Uh, they right. are check raising with uh, a decent number of fives. They do they do flat with some fives, but they have a lot of fives in their range. And then they are also um, they have a lot of like sevens and eights that make it in there. Mm -hmm. So yep. um, like you mean like queen, seven X and eight X like hands? queen eight, jack eight, ten eight, yep. ten seven, jack seven. These are the suited varieties because they obviously don't have that many. Those are making it in there. And then there is some 9X. So a lot of their ace nine makes it in there. King nine, uh -huh. queen nine. Uh, so they have good, a decent number of raises. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's it's the gut shots. And then it's the ones that block the gut shots. And the, right. those ones, I'm like, what is, okay. Um, <laughs> and then the, the fives and the nines. Um, so I think, well, it's got to find, it's got to find, when you're check raising, you're really polarizing your range. So it's got to find some bluffs, right? Right. So it's finding those bluffs that block the uh, gut shots, right. the right. other potential gut shots. Straight, like, so. am, am I, that it doesn't seem like it matters that you're blocking my, anyway, whatever. But, um, oh, yeah, because you're under the gun there. So you should right. have so any like, of that. So, like, do I have six, seven? I mean, are you worried about right. that? I mean, or anyway. Um, but, um, okay. So when we min click it back here, they see now they can actually call with some of their fives and yeah they're calling nines. with they're calling with every five because the step now you're you're so short relative to the pot like you can get it in on any future speed. the only There's... thing they're shoving here is ace nine mm. um and a Which little top pair top pair a top a little bit right of nine point. eight mm -hmm. and a little bit of king queen suited <laughs> naturally I, I yeah of course well they know, know you have jacks so they've got a lot of equity with that <laughs> yeah. queen suited but uh yeah. they're they're calling with every five when we min click it here yeah which also doesn't I, doesn't I, incentivize I, the that is click, not like... reality based <laughs> because if i min click <laughs> my jacks here and anybody on earth that I play against in most player pools has a five X here. They're, they're putting it in yeah. mostly um, when we're this short, but whatever. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, so that's, that's a, the trickiest that's one. That's a computer. That's a computer playing against another computer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah indeed. And that's indeed. why, that's why I'm looking at it saying that um, the bet that he made, the small bet he made on the turn just, it screamed to me nine. I don't know why. Yeah. It just screamed yeah. to me nine. Well, it's the only one uh that I don't know, but uh I still lost the hand. So I lost all, <laughs> all the all of these hands. <laughs> well, consistency is important, yeah. Chris. It's yeah. good. So I'm glad that if you're mastering. You think that. I have a big pair, just check raise me and you're gonna win. Yeah, that's right. Good rule. <laughs> good rule. Uh, all right, well, that's really interesting, Chris. I like so let's just sum up for our listeners. So some of the variables are your opening position because what that means for your range the actual value of your hand itself like how vulnerable to overcards it is on future streets the board texture and how static versus dynamic it is and player types that might be more or less inclined to mix it up here um those that feel like given that we're all we're always in position we're always with about 30 big blinds are there any other variables that i missed there when we're trying to decide how to proceed with this kind of stuff i don't think so well just so, the player type you're up against yeah you know. yeah 
you know, is, is in your mind, is this a thinking player? Is this a, a studied player or is this somebody just over there on the other side of the keyboard clicking buttons? Yeah. And are those conservative buttons or aggressive buttons? Because <laughs> if they swing one way or the other, yeah. that might be. I don't know. You. Are they that from Brazil or not? You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the Russian Federation. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right. Well, that was a really good uh, conversation. Thanks, Chris. And thanks for ta- uh, bringing some hands on where you lost. Because, uh, yeah. you know, that's where we make our most valuable improvements as players is by analyzing the spots that we messed up or maybe missed something. So uh, way to go on that. Any other thoughts before we roll on out of here, fellas? Well, then I really want to thank uh, Rob and Chris for their contributions. And of course, to the Running Aces Hotel, Racetrack and Casino and Hotel, Racetrack and Casino. Yeah, that's the one. And you, the listeners at home, thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next week on the Rec Poker Podcast. Have a good night, everybody.